everyone. So today I just have a quick craft project. I'm making a little sleep sack for my little hamster. And I'm just using some scrap fabric that I had. I had this, um, a couple small scraps of this Halloween bat fabric. And then I have some leftover green fleece. And all I'm going to do is kind of cut out the fleece to match the size of the fabric. And this is just a really quick, I mean hamsters will chew this up, so I don't want to use something special because he's just going to chew it up. But it's getting cool and I don't typically um, turn on my heat until usually December at the earliest. Um, I just put on sweaters and most of my critters have fur coats or have beds to sleep in. Um, so, I've got that like, so I've got one of those pieces and I'm going to dig into my scrap pile for a little batting. And again, all I'm going to do is, well, if my cat stays out of the batting. They like it when I get the craft stuff out. And I don't want to waste the batting. This stuff isn't cheap. I'm just going to remember where I put my scissors. And this project just takes a second. I mean, it'll take me probably less than 10 minutes to make this. I mean, it's really simple. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put those two pieces together, those two pieces together, and I'm going to get out my sewing machine, and I'll be back when I'm with Okay, so I'm back. As you can see, I've got my sewing machine set up, and you'll have to excuse the squawking in the back. My craft room is right next to my birds and they like to make themselves heard so and this is like I said for a hamster so I am going if I can quit hitting the wrong buttons to do a little bit I mean you don't want to spend a, a lot of time on this because like I said, hamsters are just going to chew it up. They won't appreciate it. They'll enjoy it. They'll make a mess. But I do want it to last at least for a little while. So, I don't, you know, some hamsters might not chew it up. Um, I've made this stuff for my guinea pigs. And my guinea pigs love it, and they haven't really destroyed any of their beds. You'll have to excuse the cat in the background. She wants her dinner. Um, so, and I have a lot of scrap material, so if he uses it, I'll make him some for the different seasons, just like I have the guinea pigs. The guinea pigs have... Uh, Halloween and fall. I don't remember if I made them a Christmas one last year or not. I might have to make Christmas ones for everybody this year. I got busy after Thanksgiving last year and a lot of my craft projects didn't that I wanted to do didn't get done. So I have a few right now stacked up that I've decided I need to get moving on. Um, some of them are more complicated than others. Um, some of them are based on things I've seen online and stuff. Um, you can find lots of patterns for these. I don't bother to use a pattern for the most part. This is really pretty simple. Um, it's just, a, I mean, the sewing machine does all the work. If you were going to hand do it, it probably would be a little bit more time consuming, but I'm not really, I don't hand so much of anything. And 
you could probably leave out the batting if you wanted to. But I had it. It's just a scrap piece, you know. Um, I'm sure the fleece is more than enough for a little hamster. They curl up in the bedding anyway, so. But this offers my little guy a place to go and get away from the eyes of the cats and the dog and stuff. So I think I'm going to call him Jack. For those of you who saw me get him, I right now we're thinking Jack. Um, try to come up with different names. Uh, Halloween, Nightmare Before Christmas, Jack Skellington. Um, he's a little cute for that, but... <clears throat> Alright. So, basically all I do is just kind of put the batting on each side and you want right sides together for this last step. So basically, you turn that side. Wait a minute. If I remember how this works. If not, I'll be pulling out stitches. <laughs> it's been a year since I've done it. And like I said, no pattern. So basically, you're you turn the inside one right side and then you take this the outside fabric and you put it like this and then basically all we're going to do is we're going to start stitching and we're going to get that out of our way so it's a little more complicated when you're working on a small piece. Um, it's a little easier to do with a larger um, bag, but it can be done. And you just need to make sure you're getting all the layers. If you don't get the layers of the batting, it will bunch up. And that is just a mess and a half. Because um, I do wash these. Um, and if you don't have the batting placed and stitched in, at least in... Um, at least one spot. I can work with it after that. It just ends up a mess. So. So, pull all that out of my way. And you gotta leave yourself an opening to work it the right way and basically just kind of poke it through and then pull your corners out and now I'm going to finish up this top and then I've got extra of the green and well I'll show you when I get to that step. Alright. So we just continue on. And try not to catch things because problems. 
Right. I'm going to have to back that up a couple stitches. Catch that. All your loose threads and basically what I want to do is I want to just start pulling a little bit of the batting or of the fleece up towards the top and I'm just going to roll the fleece once over the edge and I will and then poke it down and then just because I want it to look nice, I'm going to tack that. So all I'm basically going to do is I'm going to go to a straight stitch. And do that on both sides and that'll just keep it the way I want it to look so. that is a cute little hamster snuggie It'll be nice and warm. Now, as he gets bigger, I will probably have to make that bigger for him. That's not nearly big enough for um, a full-size Syrian hamster. But a little dwarf hamster would absolutely love that size as an adult. So, I will give it to him this evening when he wakes up, and we'll see what he thinks. Thanks. For Hello, everyone. So, I know the video is a little dark, but hamster likes nighttime. So I finished his little bed up and we're trying to gently coax him to go take a look because it's new and he's a little skittish and he's not real happy that I woke him up. Come on, go in your little house. No, you can't go there. Come here. Go in there. <laughs> All right, so we'll set you guys right there. Come here. You'll like it, I promise. Here, what's the cue? Go. <laughs> so, now he doesn't want to come out. That's kind of funny. Hey, little dude. Little dude. Hello. I know it's cozy in there, but you want to come out? What I wanted to see. Come here. Oh yes, he's decided he likes that. Let's see if we can take him where there's a little more. Oh my God, that's so stinking cute. Look at that. He's very happy with that. That makes the perfect way to carry him. Now he's going to get out.
Will he go back on his own? I think he's more interested in food. I'm giving it a good check out. That's a good sign. What will happen if we put a nummy in there? Hey. Hey, Jack. Can I see your nummy? I'm going to stick your nummy in your bed. We'll put two nummies in there just so it's extra enticing. Yep. Going to throw it in there. Here's your little nose. Won't be much longer than he'll have to be in a different cage. He's outgrowing this one very quickly, but he's not quite hand tame yet, so I'll leave him in here until he uh, doesn't try taking leaps off my hand. Come on. Come on. Anyway, I'll see if I can get some still photos to include, but I think that's going to be a very nice little toy for him. Thanks for watching. I hope